Hello, my name is Travis Thompson and I've got a video here for you where I'm going to demonstrate using the manufacturing space in Fusion 360 to uh, 3D print on a Flashforge Creator Pro. All right, so uh, it's a very specific example of using the manufacturing space. Really, this is for my classes, so hello everyone. Um, hope this helps. Um, and to that end, before I get started on Fusion, there's a few things that I need to download and install. So I'll show you those real quick. I've got them right here. Um, you should be provided a link for this folder or one like it in class. Um, there are a few things in here. There's the print settings library. There's the machine profile, um, which you can download from here or actually get in Fusion. And then there's this thing called the GPX post processor. You need to download all of those so you can you can do that um, all at once or you can do it one at a time. If you do it all at once, it'll come in a zip folder, so probably best just to click on each one and click download individually, uh, and they'll all go into your downloads folder. Uh, you only need one of the GPX post processors, so um, you'll most likely be on a Windows machine, so download this one, but if you're using a Mac, that's there for you as well. Um, for the GPX post processor, you can just, once it's downloaded, you can open it and run it. It's a program that you need to install, um, and you might have to restart Fusion after you've installed that. The machine profile and the print settings, you can download and I'll show you how to add those to Fusion now. So, back in Fusion, I've got this box, very simple box. Um, one thing I want you to notice is that it's in a component. Um, always starting with a component is the best practice and um, creating your model within that, okay? Um, for, uh, particularly helps with all manufacturing. It won't play in um, with a lot of what I'm doing today, um, but it is um, always handy. So, in order to get started here, once I um, have a design that I want to print, I know this is a very boring box, um, but this isn't a video on designing things in Fusion, just the manufacturing side. So, I'm going to switch from the design space to the manufacturing space. Okay, and this is uh, has the tools to allow me to do what I need to do. So, um, the first thing we're going to do, you know, on a regular basis, is start with a new setup. But before I do that, I want to deal with those things I downloaded. So well, here I have my print settings library. So I'm going to click that and you can see that I've got my PLA 1.75 mil um, from the New Haven College library. If you don't have that yet, you can click this import button and find where you've downloaded it um, to, probably your downloads folder, um, and click open. I'm going to hit cancel because I've already got it. Uh, and then I'll click uh, close on that. And then I'm going to click on my machine library and I've got my um, I've got my Fusion, uh, my FlashForge Creator Pro already. But again, if needed, you can go to local. Uh, I didn't say that about the print settings. You might have to click on local before you can do import. So you click on local, click import, and um, you can um, find where you um, saved. Oh, you have to click select from my computer, and then find your machine profile that you downloaded. Um, also from downloads, probably different to mine. Um, but then again, with that, you can also add from the, um, you can go to Additive Machines and FlashForge, um, actually, can't remember where, but somewhere you can um, import Fusion Has Profiles. Oh, here we go, Fusion 360 Library. So you can go down, I think, to FlashForge. Anyway, I've got it there for you. It makes it easier rather than having to find it. Okay, so I'm going to close that. I've looked, done my print settings library, my machine profile. And I also, when I'm looking at Fusion, I've got this GPX post process. Um, if yours, if you've run that GPX post process installer, yours should be in Fusion. You might have to restart Fusion the first time. If it's not, it probably won't show up right here, but it should be under actions. There should be this GPX post process choice. And if you want to get it on the toolbar, um, you can ping to toolbar there like I have. Okay, now we'll come back to all of that in a second, because like I said, once all that's um, been added to Fusion, um, you only have to do all that once, the stuff that I've just shown you. Okay, so but every time that you want to 3D print something, um, you need to create a new setup. Okay, and the setup uh, tells us what kind of manufacturing we're doing. So um, that's here in the operation type. So I'm going to click additive. It gives a nice little description when I hover over it. It tells me what each type of those things is. So additive is 3D printing. 3D printing is an additive type of uh, machine, so uh, manufacturing. I'm going to unclick the arrangement tool. 
okay? Um, we can do arrangements after this if we want to, but I'm not gonna do that today. That's for if we have multiple things we wanna arrange them on the, um, on the print head. Okay, I'm gonna select my machine, and that's my uh, Flashboard Creator Pro that I've uh, imported. Okay, and zooming out, it now has the correct size of the print bed and everything, so I can see how big this is in my um, in the in the printer. And I'm going to choose my print settings that I've imported. So in my local one, which I've come has come from the New Haven College settings, I select that. Okay, um, we can leave this. We don't have to touch that. It should get the right thing. But if I click OK, and if it doesn't know if I if there were no bodies selected for it to in the setup, it will just select all and it might ask you if that's okay. I can expand my setup here and I've got, it shows me the machine, the print settings, and this additive tool path, okay? And that's the important thing. That's the thing that this is gonna generate. Um, and we can see here, it's got this um, orange circle with an arrow. That means <clears throat> it hasn't been generated yet. So I need to uh, right click on that and click this generate um, button. I can probably also do that up in actions, um, yep and click on it and choose generate and actions and things like that. Now it doesn't, it just kind of spins around here. It's doing some um, processing in the background. It doesn't really show anything special, but now I can click on simulate, which is a very important step. Um, this is a pretty simple print, but um, we can simulate. It shows us layer by layer. It shows us what layer we're on, uh, current time, so how long that's gonna take and so on and so forth, which can really help for planning um, really complex builds, especially if you need to do any pausing or stopping or um, you want to check on it certain places, you can look at how much time it's going to be. You can set a, um, a timer to come back and have a look um, if, you, if you're not going to be standing there watching. Um, and especially for things like um, support, we want to use this preview to, um, to check our supports and things like that. I don't have any supports for this model. Um, I will show you briefly how to do that. Um, supports are up here. There's a whole supports menu uh, and generally I recommend um, there's different times when you want to use each of these but um, mostly what you'll be using is this um, solid volume support. Um, you can click on that, click on the body that you want to support um, and then you should be able to leave everything else pretty much as is and hit OK. Um, mine's not going to generate any support. It's going to say uh, there was none. Uh, it doesn't need it so that's empty so I can actually I can like uh, undo that. Yep. Um, control Z for undo. If you add supports, you have to regenerate your toolpath. Okay, so even if though I added it and took it away, I still need to regenerate that toolpath. Okay, if I'm happy with the preview, the simulation, then I can click my GPX post process up in the toolbar or on the um, actions menu. Okay, and there's a few things I need to put in here. First of all, I can change the um, name and uh, always a good practice, especially in classroom setting, if you're not like at home with your own 3D printer, best to put your name in there uh, if you're using like shared uh, folders or shared flash drives and things like that for the printers. Um, give it a description and your name. Make sure it's obviously got the right um, machine, which it should already. Don't touch the post path. That should automatically be selected, this special file that was installed with the GPX post processor. But you might want to change the output folder. If you already have your flash drive installed, you can choose that and it'll go straight onto the flash drive or you can use your desktop or your you know, um, cloud drive of whatever kind um, for it to um, go into. Once I've selected all that, I can hit OK and it says post-processing finished successfully. There's a variety of errors you might get here. Okay, so um, I'm not going to go through all of them. Just um, check with your teacher to get help with that or you can you know try Googling and things like that. But generally it'll be um, that the toolpath needs to be generated or, uh, or there's some, something else wrong. Um, sometimes your range tool can be a bit of an issue, which is why I haven't showed it today. Um, so um, if you don't need the arrange tool, you can just delete it and that should work better. So I'm going to hit OK. And then I can go to my uh, files where I put it, the um, folder onto my desktop, which I'm not going to demonstrate for you now, but I can drag that onto a flash drive bring that to my 3D printer and get going. Um, now, I have set the print settings for the recommended settings for our printers, but um, if you want to um, have a look at the print settings, you can always right click on those print settings and hit edit. There's a lot of information in this. It takes a second to pop up, it's on the wrong screen. So I'll bring it over. Lots and lots of settings. The main ones that you wanna make sure is that for our, for the 
printers at New Haven College that we use extruder to. Um, that's the left side, so it has the cooling fan, which is good. And then we can, oops, we don't remove extruder one. We look at extruder two, make sure we have our temperatures right. Uh, the rest of this is uh, not anything you need to really worry about. But those temperatures are your number one thing. Um, and if you want to create a raft or a brim or a skirt, um, which have uh, various uh, uses, um, you can um, you can choose which one you want to use and then um, select the settings for that. Um, and of course, if you need help, just ask. Um, and if you want a video on that stuff, anyone can feel free to request that in comments or anything like that or with me in person. All right, that is it for this video. Hope that is helpful. We'll see you next time.